Modern automotive air conditioning systems are very dependable, but there could be times when they need to be recharged. Recharging simply means adding refrigerant to the cooling system so it resumes blowing cold air. But here's the thing, vehicle owners shouldn't have to recharge their AC very often, if at all. In fact, it's simply a misconception that automotive AC units need to be topped off regularly to keep them functioning properly. Here's why. A vehicle AC system operates in a closed loop, meaning that the refrigerant recirculates on a constant path through the same components to cool the car. If the system is functioning as it was designed, there shouldn't be anywhere for the refrigerant to escape. So if the AC system isn't cooling the car, it's a clear indication that there's a problem most likely a refrigerant leak. Refrigerant leaks can occur in hoses, hose or line fittings, the condenser or the evaporator, and they can be tricky to detect. Another fairly common cause of AC cooling issues is a bad compressor, which is something I've experienced personally on my vehicle. But it might not be one of those things. It could be a bad condenser or even the radiator. There could be an electrical issue. It might even be a clogged cabin air filter that's restricting airflow. However, if the repair requires the AC system to be recharged, here are a few tips that should help the process go smoothly. Let's start with the refrigerant. Starting in 2012, the automakers began shifting to R1234YF because it's much friendlier for the environment. New vehicles rolling off the assembly line are designed to use R1234YF, while the previous refrigerant, R134A, is being phased out it still lives on in millions of vehicles that originally came with it as those vehicles require service. Even though your customer likely has either R134A or R1234YF in their vehicle, there's no decision to be made from a service standpoint. They need to use the refrigerant that the vehicle came with. In fact, it's illegal to use R134A in anything that didn't originally come with it and the service fittings are different between the two to eliminate the possibility of cross-contamination. Since it's also illegal to dispel any refrigerant in the atmosphere, if refrigerant needs to be recovered for a repair, a DIYer will have to take the vehicle to a shop to do it. That's assuming they don't have the recovery equipment at home next to the lawnmower. If the system is completely empty, it will need to be evacuated prior to charging. There's no way around this, and it requires a vacuum pump. As a general rule of thumb, a 45-minute evacuation period is adequate. In addition to the refrigerant, your customer will need to purchase the proper valve and hose based on the refrigerant to connect to the AC system. Cans of refrigerant come with or without them, since they can be transferred between cans. With the proper amount of compressor oil added and the vehicle running with the AC system on, the refrigerant can be added to the system. It takes time and patience, but the system eventually will draw all the refrigerant in. The tricky part is the amount of refrigerant. It must be precise for proper performance. Unless your customer has charging equipment, the easiest way to estimate it is to buy cans that get you as close as possible to the proper amount. If they put a complete can of refrigerant in but still need four more ounces and have an eight ounce can, they'll have to make their best guess based on weight. It's not the best option, but it can be done with a little patience. Now let's talk about compressor oil. When adding compressor oil to an AC system, it's imperative to use the correct oil. All oils are not compatible and they can wreak havoc on an AC system. Plus, many electric and hybrid electric vehicles use electric compressors that require a non-conductive oil. To avoid cross-contamination, a DIYer should never use the same can of refrigerant on two different vehicles. AC systems used to be more forgiving for the DIYer and professional technician. However, it is possible for a DIYer to successfully recharge their own AC system if they're so inclined. They don't have to be an AC expert, but they should do their homework and proceed with a dash of caution. Thanks for watching.